Admittedly, for lovers of travel and adventure, descending into the bowels of the earth may seem a very boring undertaking, because most of it consists of solid rock of grey, green and red colors, it depends on the predominant chemical element in it. There are no fantastic caves with dwarves inside the earth, nor giant worms that have not plunged into the depths of continents with abandoned cities. The ultra-high temperature and gigantic pressure will never allow the enchanting underground landscape created by the imagination of Jules Verne to appear. And yet, thanks to the latest technologies, the underground world can still impress us. Well, from the ocean depressions to the ancient deposits of the earth, we will dive into the depths of our planet and reveal the secrets of what lies beneath them, using the latest data on this subject. This time we are using a decent list of methods for studying the bowels of the earth, and here are some of them. Firstly, seismic exploration involves measuring vibrations caused by earthquakes or artificially created sources. Secondly, the graviometric survey measures the distribution of gravitational forces. Thirdly, drilling involves the extraction of samples from deep wells in the Earth's crust. Method 4. The polymagnetic method studies the orientation of magnetized crystals in rock layers. The fifth method is astronomical and space methods based on the study of meteorites. The sixth method allows reproducing geological processes in the form of modeling and studying them in laboratory conditions. And finally, the seventh method is a paleontological survey that studies ancient fossilized remains of animals, plants, and mollusks. An impressive list, isn't it? Therefore, we take all the equipment and hit the road. The easiest way to go deep into the bowels of the planet is to use an existing well. And there are many of them on Earth. But the deepest of them is the Kola Ultradeep Well, reaching a depth of 12,262 meters. For your information, hell has not been detected. True, although it is an impressive deep well, it is surprisingly negligible compared to the depth of the planet. After all, in total, it penetrates about a third of the thickness of the Earth's crust, and its length is only 0.2% of the total distance to the center of the Earth. What was eventually found in the Kola Ultradeep Well? To begin with, the researchers realized that they needed to update the temperature map for the bowels of the Earth, as they were faced with temperatures much higher than expected. At a depth of 5 kilometers more than 700 degrees Celsius. After another 2 kilometers, the temperature has already risen to 1200 degrees Celsius. At the 7 kilometer mark, one of the main discoveries was the boundary of the transition from granite to basalt. Another discovery was liquid water, which is much deeper than previously thought. One of the unexpected results was the appearance of open cracks filled with salt water, indicating that the Earth's crust is not dense, there are actually ways in it that allow liquids to flow. Even more exciting was the discovery of biological activity in rocks. At a depth of about 8 kilometers, the researchers extracted an underground layer of marine sediments. 24 species of ancient plankton, whose age exceeds 2 billion years, have been preserved in them. The shell of organic compounds preserved the microorganisms practically intact, despite the extreme values of pressure and temperature of the surrounding rock. These fossils have become one of the oldest evidences of life on Earth. Surprisingly, in fact, thousands of trillions of living organisms live in the bowels of the Earth, many of which are even unknown to science. The record depth with which the researchers took samples under the surface of the land was about 5 kilometers, under the surface of the ocean, 10 and a half kilometers. Moreover, up to 70% of all types of terrestrial microbes live underground. Among them there are several predominant ones that have been found under all continents. 
How these microbes spread through the bowels of the earth on all five continents is not yet clear. Perhaps they move inside the depths or penetrate from the surface through cracks in geological thresholds. The presented results indicate that even on our planet a huge mass of underground living organisms could exist without having noticeable manifestations on the surface. This means that there is not the slightest reason to exclude the existence of life on virtually any of the celestial bodies of the solar system, especially on the planets of the terrestrial group. Having considered the ancient earth creatures and creatures, we continue the rapid drilling. We have a mantle in front of us. It is a thick layer of hot solid rock between the earth's crust and the molten iron core and consists mainly of silicates, a wide range of compounds with a common structure of silicon and oxygen. Common silicates found in the mantle include garnet and pyroxene. Another major type of rock found in the mantle is magnesium oxide. The temperature of the mantle varies greatly, from 1000 degrees Celsius at the boundary with the crust to 3700 degrees Celsius at the boundary with the core, so we are not destined to meet any plankton. Its viscosity also varies greatly. Basically, it is a solid rock, but at the boundaries of tectonic plates, mantle rocks are soft and able to move plastically for millions of years at great depth and under great pressure. The transfer of heat and material in the mantle helps shape the landscape of the earth. Activity in the mantle drives plate tectonics, contributing to the formation of volcanoes and earthquakes. The mantle is divided into several layers. Upper mantle, transition zone, lower mantle and zone D are the area where the mantle meets the outer core. The upper mantle extends from the crust to a depth of about 410 kilometers. It is mostly solid, but its more malleable areas contribute to tectonic activity. The transition zone of the mantle is located at a depth of 410 km to 660 km below the Earth's surface, where rocks undergo radical transformations. Here they do not melt and do not disintegrate. Instead, their crystal structure undergoes important changes and rocks become much denser. Perhaps the most important aspect of the mantle transition zone is the abundance of water. Surprisingly, the crystals in the surface zone contain as much water as all the oceans on the surface of the Earth. Only here the water in the transition zone is not water in our understanding, it is not liquid and not steam. Instead, water exists in the form of hydroxide, hydrogen ion and oxygen with a negative charge, so it will not be possible to brew tea in it. By the way, the mantle has never been studied directly, but still many geologists study the mantle by analyzing xenoliths, which are a kind of rock enclosed inside another rock. The xenoliths that provide the most information about the mantle are diamonds. Yes, now I want to go underground a little more. In a good way, of course. Diamonds are formed in unique conditions. In the upper mantle at a depth of at least 150 kilometers below the surface, at greater depth and pressure, carbon crystallizes already in the form of graphite. And yet you may not have to dig deep. The fact is that sometimes diamonds rise to the surface during explosive volcanic eruptions, thereby forming diamond tubes through which you can wander for months, looking for a way out. With the help of them, we can look into the depth of up to 700 kilometers below the Earth's surface, into the lower mantle. Studies have shown that rocks in the deep mantle are most likely slabs of the seabed, which are about 3 billion years old. Meanwhile, we are getting to the core of the planet. The core of the Earth is a very hot and dense center of our planet. The spherical core is located at a depth of about 2,900 kilometers below the surface and has a radius of about 3,500 kilometers. The main sources of heat in the core are the decay of radioactive elements, the heat remaining after the formation of the planet, and the heat released when the liquid outer core solidifies near its boundary with the inner core. 
Precious metals such as gold, platinum, cobalt and other metals are also found in the core. This is very tempting, but remember that we are waiting for a very hot trip. Another key element in the Earth's core is sulfur. In fact, 90% of the sulfur on Earth is located in the core. Although we know that the core is the hottest part of our planet, its exact temperature is difficult to determine. Temperature fluctuations in the core depend on the pressure, the rotation of the Earth and the composition of the core elements. In general, the temperature ranges from about 4,400 degrees Celsius to 6,000 degrees Celsius. The inner core rotates differently than the rest of the planet. It rotates to the east, like the surface, but a little faster. It makes an additional revolution approximately every thousand years. As the entire Earth cools slowly, the inner core increases by about a millimeter each year. It grows because parts of the liquid outer core solidify or crystallize. The growth of the inner core occurs unevenly, and in parts, and it is affected by activity in the mantle. Growth is more concentrated around subduction zones, where tectonic plates slide from the lithosphere into the mantle thousands of kilometers above the core. The plates take heat from the core and cool the surrounding area, causing an increase in the number of cases of solidification. The crystallization process is very slow and constant radioactive decay in the bowels of the earth slows it down even more. It is estimated that it will take about 91 billion years for the core to completely solidify. It is not surprising that many geologists describe the outer core as the geodynamo of the earth. In order for a planet to have a geodynamo, it must rotate. There must be a liquid medium in its bowels, the liquid must be able to conduct electricity, and it must have an internal energy source that drives convection in the liquid. Variations in rotation, conductivity, and heat affect the geodynamo magnetic field. In fact, the Earth is the golden mean among the other planets of the solar system. It rotates steadily at a speed of 1,675 km per hour at the equator, thereby causing a convection current in a spiral. The liquid iron in the outer core is an excellent conductor of electricity and creates electric currents that drive the magnetic field. The energy that drives convection in the outer core comes as liquid iron droplets freeze on the solid inner core. During solidification, thermal energy is released. Warmer liquids rise up in a spiral, and colder solids descend under the influence of strong pressure. This is how convection occurs. Our journey has come to an end. I hope it was interesting. We take a couple of diamonds and return to the surface. Yes, our planet is unique for its natural wealth, diversity of flora and fauna, its vast oceans, continents and stable climate. Its bowels play an important role in the evolution of life on the planet. Knowledge of Earth sciences allows us to think globally and act locally. Find valuable resources such as water, metals, industrial minerals and energy, predict and prepare for natural disasters and study our own planet more than any other in the solar system.